individuals and critically injured the President General of Abatete, Mr. Chima Mim Ezibo. Three of the victims were members of the Abatete Vigilante Service who were with the PG during the attack. While the fourth victim was killed at Uko Junction in the Ofia local government area, uh, the attacks occurred between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m., catching residents off guard and forcing them who had ventured out for business to return home immediately. Eyewitnesses in Abateta reported that Mr. Azibo was shot in the head and rushed to a nearby hospital in critical condition. The three vigilante members accompanying him died on the spot while three um, other bodies were left at the scene. We are praying for the recovery of our PG. He became unconscious when the bullet struck his head. It's obvious that he was targeted. This is uh, coming from a man uh, who worked tirelessly to maintain peace in Abatete. Our community is in turmoil, the eyewitness said. The second incident happened in Upo. The, victims was, the victim was identified as a motorcycle rider who also served as a member of the local vigilante group. The attackers were shooting indiscriminately and the rider was hit. I can't confirm if he was specifically target, targeted, another eyewitness stated. A police source confirmed that investigations into the incident have commenced with efforts on the way to apprehend the perpetrators. The attacks come at a time when many believe the enforcement of the Monday sit at home order has declined in the state. Uh, this sit at home thing uh, uh, has been on and on for a long time since the uh, emanation of um, the Namdekano uh, uh, case, you know, and they decided to. Um, put it into place in, in honor to him, right? To um, do the Monday sit at home, and this is a, a situation where they have to hold there. They they make sure that every individual who does business does not open. Well, we have a case here where vigilante men were shot, and these are people. They are security personnel, local security personnel. that were shot. I, I don't know how this correlates, but I would love to get your thoughts on this. Uh, well, I think uh, the first thing first, I would, I want to commiserate with the family of um, the gentleman that was killed. I have said it before, and I'll say it again, that what we're experiencing today in the Southeast as a result of failure of leadership. Um, we have a situation in our hands, and we think it's something that we just, you know, um, just look at it and feel it's normal. But then again, non-state actors, you know, by one reason or the other, decided to hold an entire region to hostage. That's why I say it. Because when you say people shouldn't come out from their houses to do business and move around on a Monday, and this has been in existence for more than a year now, and they're still sustaining it, what does that tell you? It tells you that the government in place has completely disappointed the people. Because if the government continuously say that people should come out, because that's the, that's the case, you know, the government will come out. Don't worry, we'll protect you and all of that. At the end of the day, when they come out, they get killed by, you know, this um, you know, disgruntled element. It becomes a case of we don't even know who is in charge. So for me, I, I would, like I've said before, I'll say it again, that governance need to be up and running in the southeast they need to wake up from their slumber and ensure that these criminals these undesirable elements are sufficiently dealt with mm. nobody's saying that you shouldn't agitate everybody has a right to agitate mm. but don't allow your agitation affect the other man going about his business you know in as much as you know, they claim that they have an issue, you know, and all of that, and all of that. But the ways and manner they are going about this whole thing is, is sickening. Now, you person you've killed, the person has a family, the person has well wishes. So, what, what, what do you not expect his, his wife and his children to see you as? As somebody that is fighting for the freedom of, of a man that uh, obviously is from the same region with you. But, like I've said before, governance. Is, 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 is lacking in the southeast because mm. I see no reason why people should 
be compelled to sit at home and you have people enforcing that order. Even the Imam Bikanu himself has said that he has not ordered anybody to sit at home. So who is the person giving the order and who are the people enforcing it? We had of, of cases where, uh, you know, trucks were, uh, 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 were attacked. You know, businesses were burned down. People were killed. So is that it, time? Is that time governments? Because it's beyond what the people can do. This is a vigilante group. And of course, vigilante is just a collection of uh, 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 concerned, you know, uh, uh, indigenous who feel that they can equally try as much as they could to see how they can, you know, maintain law and order. Because obviously, the uh, uh, official uh, uh, channel to do that being the police, the army, they have failed them. Now they have met the unfaithful end. So for me, governments in all the states of the Southeast should see how they can come together and deal with this situation headlong. That's the only way that people can begin to have confidence in the system. Thank you very much, Mufasa, on that. Um, but his royal chief, I would want to ask, uh, this um, seat at home order has been on for a long time, uh, for like a year. And uh, like he said, um, now the Kanu did not, he said he did not ask them to take this um, pro, um, into um, pro process. And then Boyun noticed that in as much as they say you have to sit at home, they use violence to enforce it on the people, you know. And then this is, these are things that happen in the southeast, aside and Umbrella states most of the south um eastern states are also affected and then it seems like no one is saying anything about it why do you think that this law this order has been on for a long time and nothing has been done about it in all the states uh it's very unfortunate that we find ourselves in these situations because uh, this country belongs to all of us and all of us have rights to reside in any part of this country we deem it necessary to do our businesses. And then our people are in the Southeast state doing their businesses. And you know that the uh, Southeast state are more uh, predominantly into commercial activities. And that helped the economy of this country. And when you want to, and you know Monday in every setting is the beginning of the, the week. And then it's an economic starting of the week. Everyone spend your, your money at the weekend most of these people rely on their daily incomes, and you, you by force them to be indoor is enemical to the growth of our economy. It is, it is against the Nigeria constitutions. It is against the government in the southeast states, and it's against humanity, because it is only, um, it is only government that has after God. It is it should be government that and in a soliciting forms. If you want to restrict movement, you give reasons why you want to restrict movement. Just like we have election day, normally in some states, every state of the Federation, it mm. is mandated that people should go and, and, mm. and uh, carry out their social, uh, civic uh, responsibility. In those cases, you know that there's something going on in the state. Mm. But for agitation, like Ken Sarri, what we say, that uh, the, free, the fight of the Ogoni people, agitation of the Ogoni people, it is always a violent free agitation. It's a non-violent agitation that you continue to fight for the rights of the people. Okay. Is Why these do people you think they have not done anything about this for this period of time? This sit-at-home order, restriction of movement, has been on for a long time. Why do you think that security personnel have not come out? Why do you think the government of each state have not decided, you know, like he said, decided to enforce their own law of stopping the state at home order? Failure in governance, like you have mentioned. Failure in governance, because if you can look at it in this angle, uh, the Southeast states, they, they have security votes to each of these governors. What are they doing with these security votes, if not to protect lives and properties of their respective states? What are they doing with these security votes? I was thinking that they would do a kind of collaborations ensure that they stop this nonsense. I call it nonsense because taking people's life, it is, it is against humanity. 
unjust, unjustly, you just come out any day, you just keep people randomly. Mm -hmm. And the failure in this architecture, uh, security architecture in Nigeria is giving right to these um, non actors to be in possession of firearms. For instance, how many policemen are there to protect lives and properties? If you have money, you can secure yourself. And how many policemen are in Nigeria, as we speak, that is there to secure an individual, that is person? It is, it is like 10 percent per policemen that are expected to be, to be policing. Like as I'm sitting down here, there are some numbers of police that are expected, including all of us here, that one policeman should be protecting us physically or, or spiritually or otherwise. Mm -hmm. But we don't have them because those that have money, the politicians, if you check how many numbers of police going around politicians, it's on the high side. And I don't think any government, any constitution, any legislators are thinking to us that because they are part of it. All politicians, you see them with two vans of policemen. So common people like us in the streets don't have protection. And that's what is happening in the... In the in the, the, the the eastern states in uh, their country, so I think the the police, the security agencies generally, they should reduce the request of politicians and where to do individuals. If if you are requesting for um, ten policemen, they should have rules, they should have guidelines that we cannot give you ten. This other we can give you two, for instance, because it's a right to seek for protection. We can give you two. Let this other eight protect market women, okay. protect people that are coming out doing their daily, um, looking for their daily bread. Okay, so you're saying that um, if they reduce the number of security personnel that have been given to those politicians, that it would call the um, insecurity in the state? Of course, of course. How could you, for instance, you see police, one just one person, you see like four van of policemen escorting just one person. Maybe you want to go and take breakfast in a choice locations. 15 policemen attached to a particular person. What happened to the rest of the residents? So if there is, if there is, if there is any, because for instance, you see the information we are gathering, saying that there was battle, gun battle, sporadical shooting. Mm. It takes hours. Mm. No, no interventions. No intervention from whatsoever. Only what we are good to hear is statement coming from the Commissioner of Police. And I think the Commissioner of Police should be questions. Okay. Commissioner of Police in the Eastern State should be questions. What is actually happening? Is it that the people there have overpowered them or they lack wisdom or they lack wisdom how to govern these, uh, the people in that state? Because you hearing about life lost. You know, some people don't feel when you don't know this person that died. But your consciousness will tell you that it might be you. It can be anybody. So the, the best thing is that the security agency to step up their game thank to stop you, this. Thank you, his Royal Chief. Well, quickly, Mufasa, I wanted to ask, um, like he said, um, most of this um, security personnel are designated to these politicians to protect them. And does this mean that they know that there is insecurity in the country for them to have double of the number of secu security personnel that they have been having? You know, does it mean that they have not come to their realization to stop the problem of insecurity? Well, um, I quite agree with um, the chief here. Um, I'm aware that Nigeria as a country is under policed. Now, even the few police uh, the personnel that we have, like you rightly said, have been sent to VIPs and, you know, the bourgeois. I have said it before on one occasion that was opportune to speak that we have private security firms in this country just as they do in other um, you know other civilized climb yeah. if you want private security guards you can go for those uh, firms and pay your money and get some but unfortunately what we have in this country is a far cry where police officers you see them carrying bags and following the wives of their organ and all of that it's it's, it's embarrassing but like you have said we are we are we are we are under policed. The southeast as a region, there are places you go to that you can't find one single police officer. Now, assuming we even have like three or four, just a handful, and you see these boys, these unknown gunmen or whatever they call themselves, when they come, they come in their numbers. So obviously they would certainly overpower the few numbers of police officers that they, they know that will be on ground. And some of these officers might not even have the courage 
to stand up against this post. So most times what you see is that they abandon their post and they run away. So basically what I believe we should do as a people, as a country, in addition to what the state governors, because I will not exclude, exonerate them from the blame because they are the ones that should provide logistics mm. for the police you know, that's on ground. In addition to that, let the country see how we can increase in the number of our security personnel. You know, uh, what we are good at is whenever there's an election somewhere, you deploy all the entire uh, apparatus of the police force and the military to, you know, to go for election duties and all of that. But now we have a serious issue in our hands. The Southeast is at war, whether we accept it or not. Mm. And until we come to that realization as a people and do what is absolutely necessary, it will get to a point where people will find it very difficult to want to go back home, especially those who come from that region, mm. and that's is what I don't pray get. Well, if it gets to that particular point, <laughs> my sister, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. Okay, quickly. Um, the sit at home order back and forth and um, has affected the citizens of the state. And uh, we see situations where they burn houses, they burn properties, they kill like the situation. And um, we are talking about the situ economic situation of the country as it stands. And then. Um, most of these people that have been affected are commoners, um, market sellers. They are people that could barely feed, but they have small space where they manage for themselves and their families. And then we see this um, gunmen, this unknown gunmen um, in the states, destroying their properties. You know, how do you think this will affect us? The affect them in the states that um, barely cope with the situation already on ground in the country. And well, that's why I said initially that these are misguided elements, you know. You don't, you know, set your house on fire just because you want to kill a rat. As we speak today, every Monday, even kids don't go to school. Automatically, non-state actors have made Mondays to be completely useless in that region. And this is a region that are predominantly, you know, Martians. Mm. They are known business people, business oriented, and you could imagine what Mondays is for people who do business. That is just even for them. Then let us go look at because that stretch is a corridor where you can use to assess other parts of the country. Within those period of time, people can't even pass through those, those you know those corridors. So these are the issues. Economically, educationally, you can mention every other facet of human endeavor that is affected. So for me, the sooner they realize that they are killing themselves by themselves, the better for them. Like I've said before, you don't set your ass on fire just because you want to kill a rat. You want to agitate, good and fine. But the ways and manner you go about it is very, very key in every agitation. Thank you very much, Mufasa. Talking about education, uh, we have from the Lagos State Council of the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC.